Before we begin today's video, I'd like to give a huge shout out to FanDuel, the best way to play fantasy sports daily, bar none. Make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up, and this is something I use quite often. Love to make money, and I love football, so it's a fantastic combination. I also do MLB and NBA season when that comes around. I've been using FanDuel for a while, so I'm very excited to partner up with them. Make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up. I'm working on getting an actual referral link, but until then, code BANGLE at sign up. I will have a link in the description if you guys want to potentially win millions of dollars by just playing daily fantasy sports. This is the absolute best way to do it. Again, use code BANGLE at sign up. Click that link in the description. What's going on, guys? Bangle Idiot here coming back at you with another video. Today, we're doing another rebuild. It's been a while since I've actually done one of these, but that just means the fire to get back to it is blazing and burning hotter than ever. Mm, whatever. Regardless, I just got done with an argument on Twitter. If you guys can follow me, links in the description. Just absolutely ridiculous. I felt like it was being pranked. I thought I was on punked. It was just insane. Where I tweet out about Juju Smith-Schuster not being a top 10 receiver already. It He's played... In what? He's played 17 career games right now. So a season and a game. And I, he's not a top 10 receiver. I mean, we got we got a bunch of really, really talented receivers in the NFL right now. Juju Smith-Schuster's not there yet. He's just not. You can't call him top 10. So I tweet that he's not. And uh, this guy goes, he would make a better tight end than a wide receiver, in my opinion. And I go, of course, huh? This is a joke? I feel like I'm being punked. And he goes, yeah, tight end. You never thought about him being a tight end? I'm like, what am I, out of my fucking mind? I guess so I go, what? And he goes, bruh, moving a tight end isn't that hard. He has decent height with decent weight. You already know he can block. Huh? 6'1", 215. And he, he has crackback blindside blocks on people that aren't even looking? Huh? Anyway, I was just, it was weird. It was like one of the weirdest interactions I've had. It was, it was, it was just wild. It's just, it's just wild. Anyway, uh, we're not talking about the Steelers. We're talking about the Cardinals now. They got off to a really, really bad start. And this video, uh, video is being recorded before Josh Rosen is at his first career start, which he has been named the starter for Sunday's matchup or Monday, whenever the next Cardinals play. Because Sam Bradford wasn't really getting the job done. So, let's talk about the roster a little bit. So, if we take a look at the offense, and this is not exactly going to be hyper-realistic like my eventual realistic rebuilds will be. Make sure to subscribe if you're not for those. But, players that have been lifelong Cardinals and tremendous players like Larry Fitzgerald, realistically, there is no reason to keep Larry Fitz as good as he is. And I know, I know how good Larry Fitzgerald has been. But he's an 88 overall. He's 35 years old. Larry Fitzgerald will, if he doesn't retire, will regress heavily this first year. He'll be down to probably 85, 84, maybe even 83 overall. Because he's 35. And maybe regression doesn't work in real life the way it does in the game. I think that's pretty clear. I have to trade Larry Fitzgerald for value. And if you're a Cardinals fan, you're like, well, the Cardinals would never trade Larry Fitz. Yeah, I know. I know. But in the game, if we're going to rebuild this team the way I'd like to. I need to get value for a player that won't be there next year. That will never contribute to this team's success. So I have to. I know I, I clicked off when he traded Larry Fitzgerald. I get it. I get it. It wouldn't happen in real life. Hope I, mean, I hope that it would happen. Trade Larry Fitzgerald to a contender. Let him get a ring. But it won't happen in this game. So we're going to be trading some of our older players. Antoine Bethea, if we can get value for him. Uh, Corey Peters, if we can get value for him. I'd like to hold on to Patrick Peterson. I've tried to trade for him in a number of rebuilds because I think he's a very good player. And even though he is, what, 29? 28, going to be 29. Uh, I want to keep Patrick Peterson on the team. We have a decent linebacking core. I love Dayon Buchanan. I love Hassan Reddick. Gerald Hodges has been decent in the NFL. Josh Bynes is pretty bad. Jamar Taylor's here. We also have Benet Ben Wickery. Buda Baker will start at strong safety. I guess he's listed in maybe currently playing nickel corner. I haven't seen a ton of uh, Cardinals games this year. Love Robert Kimdichie, or at least I did at Ole Miss. 
He's had some off the field issues, but they have what, Rodney Gunter, Benson Mayoa. Chandler Jones is a beast. Marcus Golden, I think, is pretty good. Defensively, we're all right. Offensively, you got Josh Rosen. He's obviously going to be the starting quarterback. Sam Bradford's going to be traded. Perfect for us because he'll have some value to some teams. J.J. Nelson's just not particularly good. He is very fast, though. Christian Kirk's going to be that number two guy once we trade Larry Fitzgerald, maybe even number one. David Johnson's a beast of a running back. T.J. Logan's all right for a backup. It doesn't really matter that much. And then the offensive line needs work. Andre Smith used to be good. Uh, DJ Humphreys was looking like he was going to be good for a bit. Micah Potty used to be good. Justin Pugh was one of the best guards in the NFL with the Giants for a couple of seasons. But uh, he's not that great now. And was it Mason Cole? It is Mason Cole. Are you... He's just not particularly good in the game, at least. Um, so we have a lot of work to do. This is probably the worst roster that we've seen in all these rebuilds thus uh, this year. And Trey Boston was signed late. He wasn't even on the roster last year um, or in free agency. He was signed just before the season, if I'm not mistaken. He had a great pick the other day that Chandler Jones batted up into the air. I did see that play. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and make some trades. It was Jermaine Gresham. Kind of, did we mention him at all? I don't, think we, I don't think we did. I didn't mention any of the tight ends. But Jermaine Gresham's here. He was good uh, years ago. He's a little old now. This is a very old team, I've found. Pretty unbelievable first trade for us. As we're uh, beefing up the defense and the defensive line, Jermaine Gresham, DJ Humphreys, and a second-round pick for Miles Garrett. That is going to be pretty good for our defensive line. Now we're going to pair him up with Chandler Jones. He will likely play uh, left end. Will Miles? I mean, it doesn't really matter. We can play either in the 4-3. It doesn't particularly matter. We could also transition to a 3-4. Have Robert Kimdichie play... Uh, either left or right end. Have Miles Garrett play outside linebacker. Chandler Jones move back to outside linebacker. Have Dayon Buchanan, Hassan Reddick on the middle. Um, I don't actually want to do that. We're going to stay in a 4-3 and just look to trade. Still Larry Fitz, still Corey Peters, still Antoine Bethaeus. Bethea, I think we got rid of uh, Jermaine Gresham. I, was that just what that trade was? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was. Aaron Brewer looking like a real stud. Damn, I didn't even know. The Cardinals got Jaquise Smith, who's already 28. Wow, I'm finding out a lot about this team. And uh, they're not good things, generally. All right, Antoine Bethea, B'nai Ben Wickery, and uh, ooh, Gardeck. Basically, a half-full just container of mayonnaise. Gets us Ali Marpet. Of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he's going to play guard for us, clearly. Could move him inside to center, although I doubt that will happen. Uh, we're looking to trade Mike Ipati. I don't like that cap hit. I don't like his overall. I don't like his age. I hate him. This trade is going to be Sam Bradford and a seventh next year for Evan Ingram. Gets us a solid young tight end, basically a receiver, but I am not going to transition him to receiver. We are going to stick him at tight end still. You know, it would be kind of fun almost to play him at wide receiver. He was basically a slot receiver for the Giants a lot last year, and especially at Ole Miss. He played a lot of slot receiver. He can also play on the outside. He has great size, and he's a good receiver um, as a tight end. He's not that great of a blocker, and by not that great, I mean, he's terrible. He can't fucking do it. He just can't block. Excuse the language. I got to work on toning that down a little bit as a psycho. So he's only a 76 overall tight end, or excuse me, receiver. So... Uh, that experiment is over. We're just not going to do it. It's not worth the time. We traded for a tight end. We're going to use him as a tight end. So, yeah, I think the offense has improved. Now we got Rosen. I think I think Evan Ingram for essentially nothing was a fair trade for us. This is going to be a decent one. Larry Fitzgerald. Sorry, Larry. Go, uh... Well, I mean, the Browns kind of suck now because we're taking their best players. But maybe you'll have a chance to win with the Browns. Josh Bynes, Andre Smith as well. We get Joel Batonio and Kevin Zeitler. You gotta be wondering, why'd you go out and get a guard? And then a guard? And then a guard? Well, I'll tell you why. Is because Joel Batonio is gonna do what he's done a little bit with the Browns, at least in the preseason, and at Utah, or excuse me, not in Utah, Nevada, which is play some tackle. So Joel Batonio is going back to tackle. He's gonna play left tackle for us, even though he's been a stellar guard. We're gonna move him to left tackle. Ali Marpet is going to play left guard. We're going to have Kevin Zeitler on the right side. Um, 
So now our offensive line is actually looking pretty good. I want to protect Rosen. I want to get Rosen involved. Uh, and we need him to go off. So that means protecting him, giving him some time to throw the ball. We're going to trade a potty. We're going to trade Pew. Pew could move to right tackle. I don't like that, though. He played some right tackle for the Giants. Played some left tackle for the Giants. He's not a tackle. He was a tackle at Syracuse. He's not a tackle, right? Justin Pugh is a guard. That's where he's been his best. But even though the Cardinals just signed him in the offseason, uh, he is going to be traded. Wow, I didn't expect that to go through. I need to figure out a way to get some picks back. But Mike Potty, Justin Pugh in a first-round pick, brings DeAndre Hopkins to Arizona. So... We have now a true number one overall receiver back in Arizona after trading away Larry Fitzgerald. And what a target for Josh Rosen in DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins has made a lot of quarterbacks look good, right? He's made a lot of quarterbacks look good as he is a monster. And his quarterbacks are, have been all terrible, in my opinion, as a passer at least. And DeAndre Hopkins just bails him out time after time after time. Very, very good receiver. Top five for sure. We've got it on our team now. Question is, who's going to be that wide receiver too? Because it's not going to be Christian Kirk. JJ Nelson is bad. We need another receiver. Could also go for a right tackle. That wouldn't be the worst. Another trade for a guard who's going to play tackle. Gerald Hodges, Marcus Golden, and a fourth for Quentin Nelson. I know we're doing a lot of trading. Um, potentially cheesy trades for offensive linemen, for quality offensive linemen as well. But... Quentin Nelson is one of those really, really talented offensive linemen. Rookie out of Notre Dame, was a beast there. Can play some tackle. Went to RBC, actually, in New Jersey, which is the state that I live in, in case you guys are curious. Quentin Nelson's going to play tackle. So now we just have a not-so-good center. But the rest of the offensive line is good. Now it's all about getting that, uh, that wide receiver. Buda Baker is going to play safety. Jamar Taylor, I'd like to trade, if possible. And uh, then I think I need picks. How do I get picks? Baker is a uh, an 81 overall at strong safety, by the way. Corey Peters is still on the team. Ugh. Another big trade. Corey Peters starting defensive tackle. Benson Mio and Ricky Seals-Jones for a first-round pick from the New York Jets. We're getting one back. We've obviously uh, traded some away in order to get players like DeAndre Hopkins, uh, like Kevin Zeitler, Miles Garrett, Joel Batonio, Evan Ingram, we've traded for the best players on our roster. You know, except for Pat Pete and David Johnson. So, that was necessary. We do need some picks. We now have a first, a third, a fifth, and a sixth. I'd like to get a second, for sure. Or another first would be alright by me. I'd take a first. Olsen Pierre, we're going to say Klossel, and JJ Nelson. I think his name's Olsen. Anyway, gets us a first round pick from the Bengals. They had a lot of interest in Pierre, the defensive tackle. I don't know why, but they did. So I'm not going to complain. We have two first-round picks now. I'd like to get a second. The problem that I'm running into now is I scroll down through this roster, and I don't see a tremendous amount of value. I think our best bet is going to be adding an AQ Shipley and a backup running back and seeing where we can move him if there's mutual value. Uh, so we'll see. That is incredible. The Ravens have mega interest in Mike Lennon. They like AQ Shipley and Jaquise Smith. We're trading all of them for a first and a third this year from Baltimore. That is incredible. We've done very well here. All right, last trade is going to be Chase Edmonds, TJ Logan, and a third next year for a two this year from uh, whatever team that was. I, I honestly don't remember. Who would, it, who would the pick have been from? I, I don't even know. So... That leaves us in an interesting spot because we need backup running backs and we need um, a middle linebacker and maybe a slot corner wouldn't be the worst. So we're going to head to free agency to find those things. And uh, what's here? Richie Incognito, the bully. Not a whole lot of interest there. You know what? We're going to sign Des Bryant. We're going to sign Des Bryant. For God knows what reason. We're also going to look at uh, backup running backs. Shane Vereen is a perfect option. And that might have been Kerwin Williams right underneath him. It is Kerwin Williams. Welcome back. So now we have we have three pretty good running backs. Uh, one obviously being a lot better than the others. We also have Orleans Darkwell. He's a free agent. A travesty. Just going to have to stay at that for right now. 
middle linebacker. Navarro Bowman is here. Why not? He's just going to travel throughout the entire West. AFC West. NFC West. NFC West again. Do we bring back Kevin Minter? You know what? I think we do. <laughs> Does Vontae Davis want to come back? Uh, doubtful. We're going to sign... We're going to sign David Amerson. Bashad Breeland actually got a contract today, who I saw down there. And also Bobby McCain here, Craven LeBron, uh, LeBlanc. It doesn't really matter. The team is set. I just wanted to give Josh Rosen some more targets. So we have our guys in the correct positions, the correct spots. We can also use a backup QB and a backup tight end. So I am actually going to do that. Hold on a second. Matt Moore, perfect backup quarterback. And that's about all he's going to be. What else did I say we needed? I said something. Tight end. That's it. And um, Will Ty, former New York Giant and New York Jet, and now current Arizona Cardinal. All right, this is the team for season number one. It's changed a lot, and we're obviously a much higher overall now. And we've accumulated better picks, so I think we're probably in a pretty good spot. I'm going to simulate and see you guys at the midseason mark. We are 3-5 and five at the midseason mark. We got to renegotiate with, uh, or negotiate with Ali Marpet. Also, I had injuries on because I forgot to turn them off. So that kind of sucks, but. Oh, man. Dayum Buchanan's only a 75 overall. We could move him back to safety. I am going to re sign him. I'm going to re sign everybody. Phil Dawson, Texas Longhorn, great. I'm going to re sign the top four guys. So we got Dayum Buchanan, Phil Dawson, and Trey Boston. Ali Marpet wants uh, more money. So, we'll have to oblige at some point. We'll do that at the end of the season. We're going to simulate... Actually, hold on. We've got Coach XP. And we can level up our players. So, I'm going to do that. And then, I'll show you guys a team and things of that nature. And uh, we'll see how we do at the end of the season. Honestly, 3-5, and five, not that bad for this team. This is the team. Uh, notable overall jumps. Christian Kirk is up to a 75. Josh Rosen up to an 80, Evan Ingram up to an 87. Defensively, huge one. Buda Baker's up to an 85. Miles Garrett up to a 92. The rest have been fairly inconsequential to the uh, the grand scheme of things. And I, I was ruminating. And I think we got something going here as long as we can upgrade the linebacking core. And I'm not sure who that starts with. I think Navarro Bowman's not going to be on the team at the end of the year. It's going to be interesting to see what we do in the offseason because I, I don't even have a plan yet. We're not going to make the playoffs, but we will simulate there. So, clearly, did not make the playoffs. We finished 5-11. and 11. Worse than I would have liked. How do we do on experience points? Not too bad. Not too good either. Kind of just like, all right. Let's check out the stats of the team. See who performed best. Josh Rosen, actually, not a terrible season. 4,300 yards, almost 4,400, 28 TDs, 15 picks. It's all right. David Johnson, 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns. Receiving DeAndre Hopkins, 1,000 yards, 2 touchdowns. Really? 2 for DeAndre Hopkins? Christian Kirk had 10 and over 1,000 yards. Ridiculous season. Des Bryant was lackluster. Blocking, um, not too bad overall. And then defensively, Daniel Buchanan had a bunch of tackles. Good number of tackles for loss. Two and a half sacks, two picks. Well-rounded season for him. I'll give it to him. Tackles for loss. Kim Dietschy had 16. Chandler Jones, Miles Garrett, both with 14. Quarterback sacks, we have 13 for Miles Garrett, the only guy with double digits. Chan Jones with eight. The rest, not too much. Uh, Pat Pete, Dayon, both had two. Interceptions, not a whole lot of picks uh, otherwise. Force fumbles, four for the entire team, only two recoveries. And then... I see at least two defensive touchdowns. Pat Pete had two, what would likely be pick sixes, which is cool to see. Tom Brady wins MVP of the 11 and 5. New England Patriots. Don't see any Cardinals in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Tom Brady. We're just going to check NFC as Carson Wentz wins Offensive Player of the Year. Any Cardinals? No. Defensive Player of the Year, Manti Teo, who seems to win it consistently in this for whatever reason as the Saints go 12 and 4. No Cardinals. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Josh Rosen. That's what I like to see. Christian Kirk at number three. I would arguably uh, flip-flop Rosen and Kirk, but that's just my opinion. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Roquan Smith. We did not start a rookie, so probably would not have been eligible for that. I'm going to upgrade the team. Josh, or excuse me, not Josh Rosen. He only has two. Miles Garrett has four. 
Skill points. What did Miles Garrett do to warrant four skill points? That's got to be what? Defensive lineman of the year or something? He does have superstar development. Pro Bowl appearance, defensive lineman of the year. That's a decent amount of XP. Miles Garrett up to a 96 overall. He also got a speed boost up to an 85. Only plus one, but still. 94 power move, 89 block shed, 97 strength. Miles Garrett was a pretty good player to trade for. Wow. Evan Ingram just got a speed boost. That is up to an 80 or 91. Pretty good. Hoping that there are some decent players in free agency. We are not to the offseason yet. We got to re-sign Ali Marpet. And we got to sign some, some guys in free agency. What am I looking for? A middle linebacker. A wide receiver. Do we re-sign Dez? I don't, I don't think so. A center. And then defensively, I'm looking at cornerback. I'm looking at any linebacker, really. And then defensive line uh, on the interior. So any real defensive lineman that we can convert inside, whether it's an end or an actual tackle, will do. But yeah, the only guy I'm interested in re-signing... Ali Marpet. And he resigns. We could actually keep Kerwin Williams. I mean, we do need backups. I, I'm not not for that contract. Not for that contract, Kerwin. He a wild man. As if you guys can see in the top left. The Chargers defeat the Saints 31-17 in the Super Bowl. The Chargers are unstoppable in Madden Sim. Consistently. That's an open looking defense. That's a problem. All right, we got 50 million potentially to spend in free agency. Trevor Williams is getting uh, huge offers. Dante Fowler's here. Ken Crawley. We could sign Ryan Shazier. The Redskins and Dolphins, man, per usual, just offer max, max, max contracts to everybody. It's their favorite. Here's Brian Poole, who, according to uh, Chris Carter, is one of the hardest hitting players in the entire league. Let's see what Madden rates his hit power. 78. Wow. Talk about top tier. And, you know, I know Madden ratings aren't, uh, you know, necessarily the most accurate. But saying Brian Poole is one of the hardest hitting players in the league, how do you even acquire that opinion? Like, it's just so ridiculous to me that anyone would have that opinion. Chris Carter, ex-Minnesota Vikings receiver, current NFL commentator, or analyst apparently. Uh, just wow. What a take. I mean, with the Dolphins and Redskins bidding every single player up, I one, I can't really offer on a lot of players as the Browns are pursuing Des Bryant, as are the Giants. I could bring John Brown back. I might like that idea. What I will say, as I'm not going to, it's 29, it's asking for a lot of money. What I will say is that um, I'm being very annoyed by the Redskins and the Dolphins, and I also don't really love the free Asian class, so I'm pretty much going to avoid the entire thing. I imagine Trevor Williams is going to reject, as he does. I just wasn't going to offer him, like, $10 million a year. He's Trevor Williams, not Patrick Peterson. I don't, like, there's no reason to offer him that. You're going to auto-generate the rookies, though, and see what we can do. Talk about a stud class. Look at these top four guys. Projected third, third, fourth, and third round pick all in the top five. You guys are sick. Are there enough first round quarterbacks? Are we serious? One, two, three. There, it says on the left side. There, there are eight projected first round QBs. Uh, the top three suck badly. But wow. I mean, is that enough quarterbacks in the first? My favorite, Will Willie out of Oklahoma State. It's real creative to the parents of Will Willie. Will he or won't he? There's no joke there. It's a terrible name. That's that's the joke. Stud defensive tackle class. I know we're in the seventh round, but everyone is projected undrafted. <laughs> what the hell? I need a defensive tackle. Look at them. Is anyone here worth drafting? Leonard Okung looks interesting as a speed rusher defensive tackle that's something i guess don't see too many of those ever Ooh, marquise fudge out of texas first of all hook em horns second of all the combine and third of all 
we're gonna have to talk about his name. Marquise Fudge? Fudge. He looks very good. And we got Mac Beard. We got some names in this class. Francis Rock. Uh, whew, interesting. This is one of the worst draft classes I've ever seen. It's really, really bad. That being said, that's only at my positions of need. I'm sure there's some studs in this draft, and especially late round guys. I'm sure that there are, as we pick pretty late here in the first. That's our first pick? We have like three first rounders. They're all past 18. 18, 22, and 25. That's wild to me. The first guy off the boards is 75. We're going to trade up. A little bit. We'll see the first couple of picks. Carter Stelts is an 81. That's a pretty good player. There goes an 80 overall receiver. 76, Miles Ingram. There's a free safety, Jabbar Wolfolk, who's an 81 overall out of Florida. Matt Caldwell is pretty bad. Cameron Flugence out of Wisconsin is close to an 80. There goes Marquise Fudge at number eight. Come on, dude. He wasn't supposed to go till much later. All right, I'm going to see if I can trade up with the Broncos here. Because uh, I am a little bit worried about them drafting a cornerback due to the age of their top corner in Will Harris. And I don't want Jamar Taylor to start. So I'm going to trade 18. And I could trade 25. I don't want that. I'm going to trade a third round pick as well. It's going to be a 1 and a 3 to move up with the Broncos. I'm sure this is going to go through. I'm, I'd at least hope. We're not moving up that much. I could honestly probably try and offer less. Like a five. Although I doubt this will go through. Yeah, it's going to have to be that three probably. Let's see if this is accepted. And it's not. It didn't even move. That's wild. I'm not giving them a second round. We're just going to have to bite the bullet here. And uh, see if we have a player available at our pick. That's the player I didn't want to have the Broncos take. And they took him. He's a 79. He's pretty good. There's another cornerback. Craig Gibbs is pretty good. And there goes that defensive tackle. So, things are going well. I mean, there's not much I'd even want to draft right now. So, I think what I'm going to do is take maybe two of these picks. Two of these first rounders. And trade for a stud that I want. Khalil Mack? No, doesn't really make that much sense to. But is there, I don't know, a wide receiver or a or a middle linebacker maybe that we could use or a defensive tackle? I'm sure that there is. All right, pretty big trade going on. Trading number 18 overall, Jamar Taylor, and a third for Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now we have a pretty lethal strike force uh, with our wide receivers. I think that's a good trio. We're going to keep Christian Kirk in the slot. He performed well. So I don't really have uh, anything to say other than that. I still don't want this first rounder. But who would I trade for? Who's a good middle linebacker? Obviously, you could th say Bobby Wagner, Luke Keekley. Um, there are more. But, you know, those are some examples. CJ Mosley might be somebody we go after. We don't get him very often. He's up to a 92. All right, CJ. Can we get you? Oh, d not likely. All right, teams are being a little annoying. These picks don't seem to have a ton of value, unfortunately. And these trade offers are, you know, among the worst I've ever seen. Hey, how about we just trade back 10 spots? Oh, will you give us extra stuff? No, we'll just, we'll just take your pick and you can have our worst pick this year. How does that sound? What do you think, Cleveland? All right, we're going to trade 22 overall, a third this year, and our four-string wide receiver, Thompson Curtis, maybe? I don't know. For a first-round pick from the Bears next year, there's just no one right now who I'd really like to take. Uh, and that being said, I am going to take a player just three picks later. And that is going to be the top center, Jose Iglesias out of Auburn. Fits the scheme. Good top three skills. He's going to be a 78 overall. Quick development. Obviously, it's not a reach. He's ranked number 22. We took him at 22. And he fits the scheme, so he's going to get more XP. And he has a uh, quick development, so he's, he's going to be good in, in that department. I like it. It's a big upgraded center for sure. There goes Michael Adams. I guess the Eagles have a thing for drafting players that don't know how to spell Michael. Let's see. 
Round two, is there anybody I even want at all? Kind of. Mac Beard out of Northern Iowa. We're going to take him. 75 overall. Star development, though. Even though he's ranked number 62. They're going to give him 91 as a middle linebacker because that is disgusting. How good are you? 82 speed? Oh, wow. He's actually not bad at all. Star development, too. That makes me wonder. He's probably going to start year one. That's wild. All right, is there anyone in the fifth round worth getting? We have a couple of picks left. Um, could go with another center. That'd be an exciting draft class. Just bringing in all centers. You know what we're going to? Kevin Pickens. 75 overall. Normal development. Is not better than the other center. And you guys will never believe what happens at round six, pick two. Yes. You guessed it. It will be another center. Who doesn't love a good center, dude? No, it, well, he's gone. We're going to take a right tackle. Dre Nua out of Northern Illinois. Uh, he won't start. I will tell you that. He had to be like an 84 overall to get consideration for starting. And even then, it was it was impossible. We don't actually have a kicker. Curtis Freitas out of uh, BYU. Maybe he's a Mormon. 72 overall. He is our new starting kicker. What a stud. I'm interested to see this draft recap because this class looked really bad overall. I'm interested to see where the studs were because there had to have been some. Let's see. Was there anyone 83 plus? No, there wasn't actually. So I don't feel that bad. There are a lot of 80s. The problem was they were all either before we picked or at positions we just didn't need, which was tough. It really was. We could This halfback looked good. I had him watched, but we have David Johnson. So, unfortunately, couldn't take him. But he does look really good. I hope they change his number from 485, but I, I don't think they will. All right, time to simulate. This is the team for season number two. Offensive line is good. Got a new starting center, which is, I like to see that. We're at a 95 offense, it's telling us. I haven't quite done the math on that one yet. Also, we traded Jamar Taylor. We don't have a cornerback number two. You think that might be kind of important? I think it might be. Here's what we're going to do, actually. This is not the right decision. But what we're going to do is, at least temporarily, move Buda Baker to cornerback. We're going to move Daomi Buchanan to strong safety, which is what he played at uh, Washington State. His overall should should go up a little bit here. I'm hoping for like a, uh, I don't know, 87? 87 would be a nice boost. I'm not sure if it'll do that. It used to a couple years ago. He goes up to a 79 overall, so only a slight boost, but it's better overall for the defense. Plus, Buda Baker's an 83 overall cornerback, so I will take that. Buda Baker will also play slot corner. He already is, so that's awesome. And now we need a linebacker, so that, that wasn't that helpful. So Brian Arakpo doesn't fit. Shane Ray is good, but doesn't fit. Who is the top right outside linebacker available? So Darius Smith doesn't fit. These are all edge rushers, dude. I don't even, that's not even what I need. I need a cornerback, if we're being real. Mo Claiborne. Let's get Eric Rowe. That's not even that difficult. Is that is that that's crazy? We're trading a first and a four for Telvin Smith. That about solves our outside linebacker issue. Also, I'm not sure what that does for Dayon Buchanan. Is he now our primary starting strong safety for the future of this? I don't I don't know. We don't have a defensive tackle too. Just nobody's there. Probably should get one of those. But overall, I mean, we're not in a terrible spot. I am shocked that we got Telvin Smith for only a first, though. Eric Rowe, a 6 and a 7 next year, is going to get his Vita Vea. It would have been easier to trade for Gerald McCoy. They were in love with Eric Rowe. But I figured it would probably best to A, go with youth, and B, go with a better scheme fit, which is a run stopper in Vita Vea. 24 years old, he fits pretty well. So, figured why not go after him. 95 offense, 
Still haven't figured out the math on that one. 89 defense is, uh, I think, a little bit more accurate. But it's a good team. Question now is, can we perform? We're going to check back in at the midseason mark and uh, see if we have. So Robert Kibdichi is a uh, impending free agent. He is one of two. Be, uh, the other being Brandon Williams, who I don't really have a huge interest in. We're going to pass on Kimdichi for right now. I, I mean, I don't know. It's it's Robert Kimdichi. We're 4-3, and three, which is currently good for second in the NFC West. We have a couple of XP points, skill points, I should say. I don't think I'm ever not going to call them XP points. I got to stop, but that's redundant. X XP means experience point, right? Or points, plural, depending on you know what you want to say. So I'm saying experience points point. Stupid. So we're at a 91 overall. 97 offense, 93 defense. Uh, if you guys didn't know, the special teams weighs into that overall. So if we upgrade Andy Lee here, probably won't do anything for the overall, but it could boost it to a 92. Uh, it's unlikely that it will, as it does not. But what I will say is, that's a pretty damn good overall. I think part of it is because we have very little positional depth so if we signed a backup running back that could change the overall and bring it down but we need a backup running back Ty Montgomery is actually perfect so we will sign Ty Montgomery that could bring our overall down Terrell Basham's there uh we probably wouldn't need him so there's no point in even mentioning it but no we're actually gonna stay at the same overall with the uh the two running backs now it's a pretty good team is it a team that can win the NFC West I don't think so, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. I'm going to sit on Coach XP for a minute. Ah, you know what? We could actually use it on um, defensive backs or linebackers. I might lean towards linebackers. I think we could afford it just barely. So, yeah, it's 1800 We're going to spend it on the linebackers because we have that rookie linebacker. He's up to a 78 overall. If you guys did not see the team after I upgraded it, uh, this is it. It's pretty good. Uh, I like what we're seeing from Beard. Dale Buchanan has terrible zone coverage which is why he's such a low overall. He used to have better zone coverage. It's terrible now. Buda Baker is going to move back to strong safety inevitably. I've upgraded his zone because that, you know, is something that safeties use quite a bit. And Dale Buchanan will likely be traded or something, but he probably isn't on the best version of this team whenever we get to that. And we have not made the playoffs. We finished... 8-8, eight and eight. so an improvement to Season 1 for sure. But overall, nothing spectacular. Dale Buchanan doesn't even get a skill point. He was probably horrific at strong safety. Josh Rosen, 4,100 yards, 28 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Rushing David Johnson, much better season, about 1,400 yards, 8 touchdowns. Did fumble the ball twice, but Mike Evans, letter team and catches. Not a whole ton of yards, 5 touchdowns. DeAndre Hopkins over 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Christian Kirk beasted again, 900 yards, 9 touchdowns. Evan Ingram was pretty good at tight end. Our offensive line held together uh, okay. I never can get behind those stats in simulation. They're always pretty bad. Telvin Smith led our team in tackles. Tackles for loss would be Miles Garrett with 14. We had almost no pressure on the quarterback at all. Vita Vea led our team in sacks from the defensive interior, basically as a nose tackle style player, which is weird. Interceptions, we have three from Telvin Smith, three from Pat Pete. Simulation stats need a complete uh, revamp for Madden 20. I hope they get on that. I'll talk to some of the guys at EA and see if they can do anything. Uh, Matt Ryan wins MVP. We see no Cardinals, but NFC Offense Player of the Year also goes to Matt Ryan for, you know, the top award. Their Defense Player of the Year is Nigel Bradham, who I considered trading for, but we didn't quite pull the trigger. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Jordan Moy for the Bucks, No Cardinals in there. I don't remember drafting anyone, like an actual playmaker. Defensive Rookie of the Year, I hope we win that. And we do. It's Mac Beard. Linebacker out of some school, probably. I have no recollection of where he went. I don't even remember looking at it. We can find out here in a minute. Uh, I almost feel like it'd be better not knowing, but we will figure it out. I I'm curious. I'm not going to lie. Mac Beard went to Northern Iowa. Exciting stuff. Off-season time. Ooh, Deion Jones is in free agency. That is our new starting left outside linebacker. The Giants, as much as I hate to uh, starve my favorite team of their first real talented linebacker uh, since probably Antonio Pierce. 
we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna offer him a huge deal. And hopefully he becomes an Arizona Cardinal because that would be absolutely massive for us. Chris Jones is here. He could play defensive tackle. I actually like that a lot. Chris Jones at defensive tackle. Let's give him a five-year deal. And he's so good. We just, we just got to have him on the team. That's 110 points for him as well. We need to sign these players. Shaq Thompson's here. I just don't care for that. Unfortunately, Chandler Jones is a guy that's regressed quite a bit. He's down to an 86 overall. We're going to keep him on the team. Pat Pete has also regressed. He's down to an 89 overall as uh, a lot of his major stats have received downgrades. But he's going to go back up to a 90 with that skill point. It's unfortunate, but that's what happens with Madden regression. You know, your star players, if they're 28 years old, you can give them maybe a plus two or three on their current overall. But for their career, they're never going to go higher than that. Which, I, yeah, to some degree, I, I find realistic. But... Please tell me we signed those top two free agents. Yes, three I even went after. Anthony Brown as well. So Deion Jones, Chris Jones, and Anthony Brown are back uh, to the Cardinals. I say back. They're never on the Cardinals. Buda Baker is going to move back to strong safety. I got to trade Daniel Buchanan. I have to. Buda Baker has developed really, really nicely at strong safety. That being said... He is down to normal development. The hell, dude? It's all right. We're not going to worry about it too much. The offense and defense both look pretty nice. Again, depth is an issue. I just haven't really addressed that too much. We are going to scout. We are going to uh, hopefully draft a beast. What do we need? I think we're fine at wide receiver. We're fine on the offensive line. We're going to need a defensive tackle. We're going to need an outside linebacker. Let's see. Anyone good here? Uh, we could draft a middle linebacker and turn them to an outside linebacker. That's not out of the question. How about two Telvins on the same team? You think that's ever happened before? Uh, no, there's not even a chance. But I could be down for it. Oh, I don't even need a defensive tackle. We have Chris Jones. I just got to move him over. How about having two C Joneses at the same position on the same team? We're going to change that here. In just a second, Chris Jones going to a more natural defensive tackle position. I know he was a uh, an interior player at Mississippi State. He's been an interior player on the Chiefs. He's a 91 overall. He's a really good player. Really is. In real life, super underrated. Our defensive line's tremendous. We're listed at a 99 overall right now. Don't know about that, but... Ooh, I don't even need Hassan Reddick. We just play Mac Beard at a left outside linebacker we don't really even need anything and he's gonna be up like he'll be like an 87 overall outside linebacker as well i am really excited for the future all right let's see left outside linebacker for mac beard now that 91 looks a little bit better because he's at least an outside linebacker although it still to me is uh unnatural so we go up to uh, a 92 overall 97 offense 99 or see, 97 defense we dropped why i don't know Probably because probably back up middle linebacker. Mac Beard is an 86 overall at uh, left outside linebacker. We're going to move Hassan Reddick to play middle linebacker. He's a weird hybrid player. The Cardinals love them. Some weird hybrid players. Daniel Buchanan, Buda Baker, Hassan Reddick. There are a lot. There really are. So we go back up to 99 defense. Now we're up to a 93 overall. What do we need offensively? That's the question. Nothing. We really don't. This team's really good. This has to be a playoff team. I mean, look at it. I don't even know what we'd really need in the draft. We pick 17th overall. There's just no point, if I'm being honest. As a defensive tackle goes, there's no point to pause a draft. What do we need? It's giving us a lot of C's and C pluses for some reason. I don't know why. That really doesn't make any sense. We'll go with a cornerback here for cornerback depth. Tamani Austin, 78 overall, superstar dev. It's a pretty lucky pick. Not that fast, but he's decent in coverage. He also has superstar development. He'll be a phenomenal nickel cornerback. We don't need anything. It's beautiful. The team's very good. It's just about depth now. I don't have a lot scouted here. I have one player on my draft board. He looked pretty good, though. I don't, I'm not going to sit through this entire thing. We're going to draft him. Ontarius Rasby. He's slow as shit. Uh, but he's alright. 
So obviously not worth a second round pick as he's uh, number 89 in the class. That's a third round value that we're slapping on him and we, he was a fourth round player. I'm just not sitting around for the draft. For you know, We got Ontarius Raspberry on the team though, so that's pretty good. Let's check out the draft recap. Was there anyone particularly good that we missed out on? I'm sure of it. 83 overall left tackle taking number one overall. Two 83s, and it's Telvin Klein. Shout out to Telvin. We would have drafted him, but he was clearly off the board before we had a chance to get him. He looks really, really good. He was taking 12th overall. A couple 82s in there as well. I mean, I, I keep saying nothing that we need because we don't need any position. It's all about you know, depth for us, and that's really the issue. We don't have a lot of depth, but I keep talking about it, and it doesn't really end up battering. It's a pretty good team. I feel like this is one of the better teams I've built. I could use a better corner, but I think we're fine. It's a great defensive line. It's a great linebacking core. It's a great secondary. On offense, the offensive line's great. The receiving core is great. David Johnson's really good. Josh Rosen is an 86 overall. So the only thing we can do now is simulate. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark. I'm going to... I'm going to simulate to the regular season first. Hopefully, I get some coach XP. And then, hopefully, I'm able to afford some good packages. I'm going to buy those packages. We didn't get any. Um, stupid. We could do O-line. I don't want to do that. I want to do defensive back. I'm going to have to simulate week by week until we get a win so I can get some coach XP. I think we're going to make the playoffs, though. This is a playoff caliber team. Like, let's be real. And that's going to be some coach XP. And we're, we can't get fired. I have coach firing off, I'm pretty sure. I might not, actually. I might not. So we go 1-0. We have the coach XP for it now. I'm going to spend that on defensive backs. I'm going to see you guys for the midseason mark. This team better make the playoffs. That's all I'm saying. Like... I don't know how they wouldn't. This is such a good team. This might be... And I know the overall might be glitching out because I don't think it's this good. But this might be one of the better teams I've built so far in some of these rebuilds. Top five, maybe? It's a damn good team. All right, our last game you guys can't see in the top left. We lost 35-32. And we don't have a lot of coach XP. This worries me. We're 5-3, and three, so we are positive. And some of our wins have been real close because week one was super close. And then this last loss was super close. So, <laughs> one by three over the Packers. Barely lost to the Rams. Lost to the Giants. Beat the Seahawks. Beat the Jets. Barely lost to the Bills. We've had some really close matchups. Decided by uh, decided by a score or less. It's going to be important to re-sign our top players. This will be either the last season or the second to last season, depending on whether we make the playoffs or not. We have a lot of good players to, to re-sign. Miles Garrett's down to star development. Why? When did that happen? What's up with Madden taking away development trait, dude? I hate that. I hate that so much. Uh, we're going to upgrade him to a 99 overall. So hopefully when we negotiate this contract, he's now more expensive. That would be my goal. I'd love that. Resign? Awesome. Pat Pete to a one-year deal. He's going to resign. Buda Baker is super important because he's probably the best player, best young player on this defense aside from Miles Garrett. We're going to offer him a five-year deal. Not even that expensive. Buda Baker returns. Evan Ingram I want back for sure. And then I'm probably out on Hassan Redick. We're going to offer him a six-year deal, get him until he's 31. He's going to re-sign. And we don't really need to worry about the rest right now. Hassan Redick did not perform well over this rebuild. Neither did, da da not Dante, neither did Dale Buchanan. And if you don't perform, you got to go. I did not use skill points. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to cancel the auto sim there. And we're going to upgrade. I'll show you guys the team. And then I will uh, see you guys for the playoffs. I think we're going to make it. Mac Beard is up to an 88 overall. Been trying to work on his zone coverage a bit. That star development's been so good for us. And Austin has eight skill points. What have you done to get eight? He's still not that good. That, that speed is so bad. Have you gotten a couple picks so far or something? Eight skill points is a lot. One interception. <laughs> what is going on? It's so funny because our cornerbacks over the course of this entire series have not gotten close to eight. Is Superstar Dev just that OP this year? I'm for it. Like, Anthony Brown 
who's a young enough corner, 26, has normal depth, gets one skill point. We get a similar age. He will be actually a lot younger, probably. 21, but with superstar dev, gets eight. He's going to be like an 85 overall, depending on what we decide to do. Finally, a plus one speed for him in man coverage. He is going to go up to that called 85 overall. And his speed only goes up to an 87. His man coverage is a 94, which is pretty good. He's an 85. Dude, he's going to start... We're going to keep him where he is, actually. All right, this is the defense. This is the offense. We're listed at 99 overall offense and defense. So it is pretty good. I'm not going to worry about the XP for some of the you know, 60 overalls on the team. We're coming off a 28-24 win over the Saints, as I could see in the top left. You guys couldn't, so it doesn't matter. But can we at least make the playoffs? Answer is yes. We went 10-6. and six. And we have the uh, 49ers interdivisional play in the playoffs in Glendale, Arizona at University of Phoenix Stadium. So I'll take that. Let's go ahead and check out the stats. See who did what. Show me something, Josh. You know what? The yards aren't where they've been, but the touchdowns are way higher. Interceptions are lower. About 4,000 yards, 35 TDs, 10 picks. Rushing David Johnson, still a beast. Yards are up 1,500, about 11 TDs. Four fumbles is too many. And then Josh Rosen spreading the wealth. Four receivers with 65 catches or more. Four receivers. Three receivers with seven touchdowns or more. DeAndre Hopkins has four. Evan Ingram at tight end with 10. You know, four receivers, 750 yards or more. Good on Josh Rosen. Getting everybody involved. I like it. Defensively, Deion Jones balled out. 110 tackles. Let the team tackle for loss. Miles Garrett, Vita Vea, and Chris Jones all had 13. Quarterback sacks, 12 from Chandler Jones, 11 for Miles Garrett, 8.5 for Vita Vea, 4.5 for Chris Jones. Interceptions, 3 for Telvin Smith, 2 for Pat Pete. We are not getting a ton of interceptions. I wish that would go up, man. I feel like all these quarterbacks, as we get Buda Baker with the only defensive touchdown for us, I feel like all these quarterbacks are throwing picks, but I feel like we're never catching any of them. Blake Bortles wins MVP at 13-2-1 for the Jags. And then 75 overall, Jerry Abushi of the 10-6 and 6 Giants is in there at number two. You're 75 overall. What are you talking about? Josh Rosen at number eight. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Jerry Abushi and, and followed up by Saquon Barkley. What's up with the Giants, dude? I'm a Giants fan, but I don't understand that. Josh Rosen in there also at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year is 74 overall, Donald Payne. What is going on with the Giants? Fudge is in here. No Cardinals. Offensive rookie of the year is Mark Taze Howell of the Cardinals, which is us. Does anyone know who this is? Who are you? Defensive rookie of the year goes to Tamani Austin. How? I am so confused at what has gone on in these awards. Someone's got to be paying off whoever decides the awards because it doesn't make any sense. Howell is the backup running back. He's won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Which also, might I add, is almost no XP for him. It feels like if your development is is normal, you are getting shafted on XP. If it's Superstar, you are getting so much XP. We're going to check out whoever our cornerback is at one Rookie of the Year. I still can't believe that he did. We're gonna, we got to check him out. He has six points. So on the year, he got 14 skill points. I have never seen anything like it in my entire Madden 19 playing career. Tamani Austin had one interception. He had 97 tackles, though. That is a lot of tackles. So the combo of getting a lot of tackles, I guess, for XP, being a scheme fit with the defensive back, with the every player uh, skill point upgrade for like more XP, with Superstar Dev, you are going to get a ton of skill points. As you guys can see, his bar for obtaining a skill point is very, very low. A lot of players will have that up anywhere between between like 9 to like 20 or 30,000, depending on how old you are. This is at 4,000, and he's an 88 overall. That's just insane to me. We're going to keep going into man coverage, because why not? He's at a 90 overall as a rookie. We'll do slot. Why not? I don't know how that just popped up there. That's where he's playing predominantly, but how can we not start him? 
He's a 92 overall now as a rookie. Plus one speed, finally. <laughs> We're getting so many skill points. 88 speed, 99 man. We have to start him. I mean, how could we not? He's the best cornerback on our team. Like, even Miles Garrett. He's over 9k XP for upgrade point. He is superstar dev. He's only 24 years old. Yet, Tamani Austin, it, it costs 4,500 XP for him to gain one skill point. That's insane. That's why he's getting so many. I, I don't even understand it. Vita Vea is 11, almost 12k. Why is his so low? This is the team. As far as notable upgrades, Christian Kirk's up to an 83. He's been killing it, slowly but surely, over this rebuild. Josh Rosen up to a 90. Defensively, uh, this is one of the most fun defenses I've built. You guys, if you've, you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I value and appreciate defense more than offense. It's just for personal preference. I, I love a good edge rusher, or a cornerbacker, or safety, or linebacker more so than I, I like, you know, a, a tight end or receiver or running back or a quarterback even. I just, my personal preference. But I love building defense, and this is one of the best defenses I've built. We are going to jump into the game, though, to play the moments against the 9 and 7. San Francisco 49ers, we are a 94 overall to their 86. I hope and expect big things to happen for us, obviously. If the Niners come out and kick our ass, I'm going to be disappointed, to say the least. All right, red zone alert with 420 left in the first quarter. Blaze it, dude. All right. On a serious note, we got some playmakers out here. DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Evans. Nobody's wearing their correct number. Let's see what we can do. All Madden difficulty per usual. And that is pressure coming in. We're going to run with Josh Rosen. Slide before getting our head taken off. We'll stick out a single back ace. See if we can hit a slant quickly. We could run on this, actually. Let's go ahead and run. We got David Johnson. Might as well take advantage of him. Tried to lower the shoulder there a bit. That was a weird set of animations. We're going to stick in the hurry up, though. I like these slants as options to throw to. They tend to get open in the red zone. As you can see, DeAndre Hopkins, touchdown. There it is. Wow. Good read on the ball from the linebacker. I don't know who wears number 52 on the, uh, the 49ers now. Because I'll tell you what, it's absolutely 100% a drafted player. There's no way the Niners are giving somebody else 52. As we find DeAndre Hopkins in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Patrick Willis is a legendary 49er. And... He probably won't make the Hall of Fame because he didn't play long enough. He was drafted in 07 in the first round and uh, retired in 2018, maybe in 2015 or 2016. Man, I miss Patrick Willis. One of my favorite players ever. But uh, unfortunately, he probably won't go down as one of the best linebackers ever. But I'll tell you what. Up there with like Ray Lewis, he's probably the best linebacker I've ever seen play. As far as pure, just all-around zone coverage, shutting down the run, making tackles, sideline to sideline, that is a heavy blitz. I don't know that I'm ever going to see a better one. Patrick Willis is phenomenal, and was, for sure, I mean. That's wide open. Who but DeAndre Hopkins? That got just so open. What defense was that? Cover nine? Interesting. That plays kind of like a, uh, a cover four. You, I thought it would be a cover two with how wide open the middle of the field was. Cover nine. A little bit of a rare coverage. I wanted to take a shot deep. We had stuff open, but I got greedy. Of course, we're going to use her. Wouldn't be uh, one of my videos without it. It's third and 18. And that is open and deflected. What a fantastic play in coverage by... Who's number 50? I don't even have a guess. San Fran just took the lead. Are you kidding me? David Johnson up the middle. Down at the two. We're going to move into the hurry up. I think we're going to go back to the halfback dive. Are they stacking the box? They are. We're going to get out of this. We're going to throw a slant. Is that a sack? Oh my god, dude. Adrian Colbert. Ugh. Oh. It's the fourth time we've been sacked today. We're going to set up for the field goal attempt with Freitas, Papas Freitas. And that is good. It's going to be a tie ball game. 
24-24. Fantastic. All right. Another moment. We got to make a stop. I'll show you guys when I inevitably pick off Jimmy Garoppolo. That's picked off. Telvin Smith is wearing number 50 for us. And that is a pick six from Telvin Smith to give us the lead. 26 yards to the house. And now we're going to take a 31-24 lead with under two minutes to play. Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers are going to have to drive down the field with limited time to play. This one, I think, should be all but over. That's got to be a sack. Let's go. Chandler Jones off the edge, his second of the game. And time is running out. Time is very much running out for these 49ers. That's over the top. How is that caught, dude? Jimmy Garoppolo with the best pass I've ever seen. <laughs> Debatably. Plus... A Buda Baker hit stick that does nothing. Time is ticking away here for the Niners. 35 seconds remain. We'll give them short and intermediate. Just do not get beat deep, please. That's my bad. Are you kidding me? How is that open, dude? Mac Beard blows it up in the backfield. San Fran's going to call their final timeout. It's going to be fourth and goal. Game is on the line either way. Playing hard flats. We're not going to get beat short. There's pretty much nowhere to go over the top. We got to make a play here. That's got to be nice play. Trey Boston knocks it away. And this game is over. All right, we narrowly managed to escape the feed here against the Niners at home. They made a good comeback, and then if not for a Telvin Smith pick six, who knows if this game could have gone. All right, Josh Rosen did not play particularly well here. It's all right, because David Johnson was an absolute animal. Receiving Trent Taylor destroyed us, but DeAndre Hopkins was pretty good. Only two touchdowns for us were the ones that I threw personally. Great stuff, Josh Rosen. Quarterback sacks, two for Chandler Jones, one for Chris Jones. One for Telvin Smith. Interceptions from Buda Baker and Pat Pete, as well as Telvin Smith, including a touchdown for Telvin Smith. We saw that one. Not bad. Time for the divisional, though. So we got the Giants. <laughs> Unbelievable that the Giants have done so well. And I am a Giants fan. They're 79 overall. Can we get a reality check here on the Giants? How are they doing so well? This is un. Unreal. Unbelievable. And the rain's coming down here. I had MetLife here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Let's see what we can do here. Let's get some points on the board. From the 16, the Giants already have two turnovers. How do we have no points? How have we not capitalized yet? Love me some slants. Let's run some. DeAndre Hopkins. First down. There's David Johnson. Touchdown. Touchdown. We'll take the nice little table route to the running back to get on the board first. Easy. We're smashing the Giants. I feel no need to, you know, step into the game here. Uh, they're going for it, though. I like myself some defense. It says they're punting. It doesn't say they're going for it. It says they're punting. So we're not going to do that. They're clearly not going for it. The game's over. 48-13 to 13 is your final. And we smashed it. This weird overlays on the screen, which I hate. Josh Rosen was a beast. Jerry Abushi sucked. David Johnson was a beast. Saquon Barkley was pretty good. DeAndre Hopkins led our team in catches and receiving yards, but Evan Ingram had three touchdowns. Sacks allowed. Not a whole ton in this game. Sacks four. We got half a sack for Vita Vea and Telvin Smith. Interceptions for Buda Baker, Tamani Austin, and Telvin Smith. Like to see that. Force fumbles from Trey Boston and Deion Jones. We recovered only one of them and had no defensive touchdowns. But that is the game. We're on to the AFC. Nope. We're on to the NFC Conference Championship. The Birds versus the Birds. Despite having uh, the same amount of wins, the Falcons tie. They have home field advantage in the NFC Conference Championship. We're going to upgrade Evan Ingram to a 92 overall as he just went off. Three touchdown catches in one game. I like to see it. We also might have a point for 
Tony Austin. I actually just spent that, so we don't. Conference championship time from Mercedes-Benz Stadium, a.k.a. the Georgia Dome, even though it's not that anymore. <laughs> Let's see what we can do here. And that's going to be actually intercepted by Patrick Peterson. And how do we not get a block there? Dude, if we got a block, that might have been six. I swear to God. Big close game. We are down by one. It is 14 to 13. We have a turnover, apparently. We're already to the end of the second half. 25 seconds remain. Can we stop him? Oh, there's no way he just lobbed me like that. What a play from Buda Baker to knock the ball free, but wow. That was one hell of a throw. I thought I read that route really, really well. And Matt Ryan, that lob pass was insane. All right, we're taking over again. We're going to get points on the board here as long as we don't turn over the ball again. I don't know what happened that last play. I really wasn't a fan. But we have that one. Mike Evans, end zone. He didn't drag the feet. You got to be kidding me. Oh, wow. We're going to have to step in and take over for the final two minutes, which I'm sure no one will be opposed to. Rolling out with Rosen. Give me something, dude. Just nobody's continuing open. Their favorite thing to do is just go over to uh, the other side of the field and just stop running all in about the same spot. No one's trying to get open. Playmaker's not working. Absolutely brutal. Inside zone, David Johnson. Give me a block. Up the middle. David Johnson, touchdown. Just hand the ball to the ref, David Johnson. We're done here. Do not celebrate. We're down. We got to make a stop. Got to make a stop. We have time. We have timeouts. I don't think that's an issue. We just have to make a stop. You'd think they'd run the ball here. You really would. It's play action. We're going to go after the quarterback. It's not play action. They do hand the ball off. Either way, they were screwed because I went after the quarterback. It looked like play action to me. Thank God somebody was there. And now we're going to come out in uh, cover three. We're going to get back. We're going to play the sticks here. We cannot get beat it's gonna be a run oh miles garrett please wrap up should have forced him out of bounds but i, I think i was too risky we're gonna call our final timeout. we're gonna have a minute 38 to drive down the field get a touchdown less than that probably a minute 25 when it's all said and done we're gonna return though there's pat pete minute 29 from the 41 this is this is doable we can do this we can run the ball they're gonna come out in these weak sets we have time that's not really an issue. What is an issue is when nobody blocks. There was such a big hole. They have three down linemen. They're going to change personnel a little bit here. Third and one. David Johnson's open. The problem there was the cornerback. Isaiah Oliver was in cover two. Or he wasn't, but he was playing like he was. He was uh, in a cloud or hard flat or something. It looked like cloud. We're going to step up. With Josh Rosen. I tried to slide, not working out. Time is beginning to become an issue. We need to get out of bounds. We need to get out of bounds pretty badly. DeAndre Hopkins, okay. Third and two. Just give me time to throw. You've got to be kidding me, dude. Can we hurry to the line? It's 4th and 10 game on the line here. And we're going to get sacked. That's when the offensive line chooses to collapse, man. I shouldn't have called a play action play. That's, that's true. But wow. Can the offensive line not hold for even a second? We got crushed. Close game. Can't win them all, unfortunately. Even starting the game off with a pick. That's tough, but that's going to be it for the video. We're going to lose by five in the NFC Conference Championship, but the team is sick. I think it's a Super Bowl caliber team. Uh, if we didn't just totally collapse there at the end on our offensive line, back-to-back -back sacks really, really hurt. But Tamani Austin in his rookie year is a 94 overall, which is something that I haven't even... I don't feel like I've seen anybody close to that um, in anything else. He was incredible. So I like to see that.
But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.